color deceives continually. And if color is a trickster, how do we know what's real or convey the color we want? A question that Boston University Associate Professor of Art Richard Rezels encourages students to ponder. We take a color and put it into a, a field of larger color. It seems to change its identity. It becomes a chameleon. Here's an example of color in context. How many colors do you see? Do these seem similar, these two colors? The differences are actually quite enormous. So that, that's that color, and this is this color. Oh, they're and different. So this large field was the sponge that took darkness away from that color. How about now? Though it may appear to be four, the correct answer is just three. These are the same color? Yes. They look completely different. To the artist, this is a lesson in show. The painter always has to ask the question of uh, what color do I see and how do I make this situation available to the viewer. So is there any color we can count on? If you're seeing red, you're probably close. But even that vibrance can vary. Red is quite stable. And I'm always surprised when a student can change red. Here's a red ring that is actually seeming to change in, our, in front of our faces as it moves onto different fields. My main connection to, to color is emotional. The outline of an artist brought to life through the splash of stimulating paints. Philippe Ortiz, a graduate of the Mass School of Art, says when he returned to his home country of Colombia several years ago, his canvas went from paper to stone. In my re-encounter to Colombia, I noticed a lot of public art that was um, bursting with color out of the walls and uh, it was very vibrant and it was very pictorial and it had a lot to say and that definitely gave me an influence to want to express myself. His expressions of life through migration can be seen around the world. We met him under what was a dark and dingy overpass in Chelsea a much different place now. What's amazing here, the base, just three colors. I'm not trying to be monochromatic, but I choose primary colors as my base. He spends hours mixing and pouring that palette into a new dimension. A lot of hours, you know, a lot of colors that will come out muddy, but definitely enough will to keep exploring until I got the perfect color and the perfect tonality and, and that's what drives me. He says murals can be therapeutic to the viewer too. It's the ability to connect a community to a story inside themselves. I hope that people are inspired. I hope that people can at least stop and take a look uh, and take a moment from their lives to see something different. I hope that the color can uh, ignite something in them. And back to Professor Rezels. He tells us he's camera shy, but agreed to the interview with Nicole because he just enjoys his class so much. And so do the students, apparently. We are told his course, The Science of Color, is already fully maxed out for the spring semester. Still ahead, the